Okay guys, welcome aboard. It is Professor Timbot and I'm making a quick video to show you how we are going to be running the CPAN 202 course with Humber. Now, I have gone ahead and set up a Git server for our use. And if you're not familiar with Git, you need to know that it is probably the most important tool that you are going to learn as a developer. Git is a code versioning service. And so basically what that does is it helps you to set up collaboration with other team members. It helps you to keep track of your code and any changes that you have made. And so the first thing that I'm going to get you to do is head on over to this address here, oddlylabs.com. Now I'm going to go ahead and sign in here and I'm going to, but in a minute, I'm going to show you how to register and get yourself all set up, get your first repo set up so you can start working on your assignments. Um, but first I'm going to show you what I see as the faculty member in the background here. So I'm going to go ahead and sign in using my account that I've set up for my faculty account here. So I'm going to be oddly Timbot. So that's the first thing you need to know. If you see notes appearing from an oddly Timbot, that is me, my company, Oddly Studios. I ran for 12 years and uh, developed out more than 800 projects. I've built software, I've done websites, embedded systems, electronics. You'll get to know all that. Signing on in. Here we go. Okay, so first thing I'm going to show you is the dashboard area here. And you'll have something very, very similar to this. And this is very nice because it basically creates an active record of everything that I've been doing. So if you ever wonder what uh, good old Oddly Timbot's been up to, you can check out my public activity. And you will see basically what I'm doing, when I'm doing it. And any time that I've made a change, you can see the actual change. They are linkable inside of here. And if I click on those links, it's going to show you the actual exact change that I've made in the code repository. So I've kept talking about code repository. Well, what do I mean by that? So a repository is basically just a folder full of code. But it is a little bit special because with a software like Git, that code is actively monitored by the software for any kind of changes. So you can see right on the right hand side here, I have my own repositories and I've just created a little test repository that I've been using to make sure everything's running okay in our Git installation. But then down here, you'll notice it says Humber CPAN 202. And this is basically where all the lesson materials, all the assignments, all the examples are getting gathered together. So once you've got your own account set up, I will add you to the Humber organization here. And if I click through to that, you can see that CPAN 202 is right here. And so this, this that we're looking at right here is the repository where every single piece of material, everything that we're doing is going to be gathered together. And you can see on the right hand side here that, uh, a good number of people have already been signing up and have been added onto the Humber organization. So that's what you need. Now, if I click through to the CPAN 202 here, you will see that it is organized by weeks inside of these folders here. And on the landing area, you can see the critical path, which basically gives you a breakdown of the weeks and what we're gonna be doing for each week. And if I click into any of these weak folders here, you are going to find a little uh, readme section at the beginning explaining what's going on. And then inside of each, you're going to find an assignment if there's any assignment here. So if I click on the week one, basically our assignment was just to put together a little bio and you can see mine on the first page here in the about the professor section. So I'm going to be walking you through how to get set up and get your repo put together and begin work on the assignments that you're receiving here. So I'm going to head back to my dashboard and then I'm going to log out and I'm going to take it from the top, creating a student account for myself so that you can see how you get up and running. And it won't take too long. So let me go ahead and sign out. There we go. So the first thing I got to do is click on the register button up here. So I'm going to go to the registration. 
I'm going to pick down a username and um, I'm going to call myself student Timbot so I can tell the difference between that and my faculty account. I'm going to plug in. Now you have to plug in an actual real email address here because there's an authentication step. It's going to send you a link and you're going to have to click on that link in order to verify that you are creating an account here. Pretty standard stuff but you do need to use a valid email. You should also use an email address that you look at regularly because uh, as we go along and as we as we get used to working inside of Git, uh, the system's going to send you notices once in a while when there's things like an assignment or you've gotten some feedback or there's some work for you to do. So let me pick out a password. And then let's see if I can manage this CAPTCHA Man, sometimes these things just throw me off. Well, let's give it a try. Okay, so this is what I was mentioning here. We have to actually activate our account. So I'm gonna head on over to my email here. And uh, gonna go to my other account here. There we are. And I should be seeing an email with a link here. Now you're going to see that it comes from Leaflet. Leaflet is an educational software suite that I developed. And I'm using the mail server for that. So keep an eye out for Leaflet. And I'm going to click on here. And then inside of here, all I have to do is click on this link. And boom, just like that, my account is activated. And I am ready to go. Now, I haven't been added to the Humber organization yet. So if I click on here, I won't see that. Now, that's my job. So basically, after you've made your account, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to add you to the organization and you'll be able to view everything and also view all the accounts of the other students that you're working with here. So for the time being, I am going to create my first new repository just so you can get used to that. So I'm going to click this, and I'm going to call this repository my CPAN202 repository because this is where I'm going to accumulate all of my work. And at the end of it, I'll have a really nice portfolio of code that I could show to anybody and that I could uh, take and move over into any kind of system that is using Git, like if I wanted to push it up onto GitHub or something like that. Totally doable, all right? Uh, in the description, I'm going to say my full body of work for the Humber CPAN 202 course with Professor Timbot. Or whatever you like. You can always change this. Uh, now, you've got the option of making this a private repository or keeping it public. I would say for now, keep it public. That's going to be useful when we get into conversations and discussion boards or anything like that. If you want to send a link to, uh, to show the exact piece of code that you uh, are asking a question about, uh, it's, be, it's going to be more useful for you if that is kept public for now. Now, you can always switch that over to private if you want to lock people out. You can't lock me out because... I'm Tim. <laughs> I, I basically I I have full access to all repos on here. I can look at any of the activity, um, but you know, for 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 the sake of discussion, I'm going to ask you to keep that public for now. Now down here, you've got these three additional options. This first one called a Git ignore. Well, what is that? Well, the way that this is going to work is we're creating up our repository here online. But then we're going to download that onto our local computer for for to you know in order to do our work. Um, on that local folder, you may accumulate some file types that don't you don't want to push online into your repository. Like for instance, let's say you get a Photoshop file in there. You've got a PSD or something like that. Uh, well, that's something that you would not push into versioning. Versioning is strictly for code, right? So what the git ignore does is it sets up a bunch of file types that should be ignored by the versioning software. And there's a bunch of templates in here, thankfully. If I click on here, probably the, the one that you would most want to use is the one for node. 
right? Because this is a web development project, um, this git ignore template here is going to cover most scenarios for you, right? So I would say select the node git ignore file. And then for license, I always pick the MIT license just because it makes me feel super smart. <laughs> like I'm a brainy MIT person. Um, but this is not that crucial, but hey, why not pick MIT if you've got the choice? And then uh, down here in the readme, you can leave that as the default. And what that's going to do is create a default, um, you know, landing area in the repo. We'll take a look at that in a moment. So I'm going to check off, initialize this repository with the selected files and template, and I'm going to create my repository. Cool. And just like that, I've got my first repository here. Now, this is the readme file that I was talking about. And in week one, you were requested to basically put together a little bio. And uh, what I'm going to get you to do is update this readme file here with that bio. Now, this will be a great way for you to get into using Git. And it'll also teach you a little something about a format called Markdown. You can see that this is a .md file right here. That MD stands for Markdown. And Markdown is, um, you know, another tool very, very commonly used by developers for doing any kind of documentation. So when you, you know, get finished up with Humber and you're ready to hit it and get that first job, it's going to be a lot more impressive for you if you are able to show a lot of familiarity with uh, using code versioning with Git. And then if you're also, you know, showing that you do documentation using Markdown, my God, <laughs> any employer is going to love you. I have had such a hard time finding people who know those details. A lot of people know how to code, but coding is only half the battle here. There's a whole bunch of other skills that you need to know as a developer. Those are the ones that are actually going to give you the edge, right? Learning to code, well, that's something that, you know, you, you're going to learn it on the job. You're going to get better as you go. Learning to do documentation, take care of your code, work collaboratively in a team environment, that is something that is going to give you the edge. And I want to make sure that you know how to do these things. So in order to do it, well, we kind of need to move along to the next part of this where we cross over onto our local desktop. We download this repository onto our local desktop, make the changes that we need to, and then commit it back up into the online system here. Now, when you do that, that is basically you submitting work as you go for your assignments. So that's going to be pretty critical. Let's get down to the second half of this right about now.